Hi again. I am going to swatch uh, these colors that I filled the other day. Um, I'm using a pipette. I think that's what it's called. I'm going to put in one little, you know, a little drop of water just to help hydrate. Well, two drops. The, um, the pans that I'm going to tr try out. Let it sit for a second. Uh, I'll talk about how I did this. Um, on the back, uh, before I would only put on the back, uh, what it was, the front page, <laughs> you're not seeing this, I'm talking to, trying to explain something, but it's not being done very well. Okay, before I did it like this, I would put the name of the item, the number, and which brand it is, um, this page has all Daniel Smith because that's mainly what I have. Uh, but I have a few schminkies here, okay? And uh, that's, that's what my pages look like. But I watched a YouTube video today that really made me realize how much nicer it would be if I had some information on the front as well. So I plan on filling in the, the front with with a little bit of info uh, and I also want to put the pigment number on them because I think that's going to be very helpful now that I have more than one brand so that's my idea I uh, have here that this is Daniel Smith it's imperial purple it's 284 600 which I know already but I'm putting it on these cards because there's room and 174 so here I have the pigment which is PV19, it's Imperial Purple. It's by Daniel Smith, it's right here. And um, I am going to swatch it on this front and I'm gonna hope that the pen that I used, which was a Micron, uh, it's a real old Micron, I think I've had it 15 years, it still works. Um, lots of stuff is old like me. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to sw start swatching. Hopefully it doesn't make the, the writing run. If it does, well, then I'll have to look for another pen and maybe do a new card. So, and this one is uh, 174 and it's good to check because you might use the wrong pen. So, wow. It's really uh, dark, so I think I need more water. So it might not be so smart that I covered the name. Uh, it's not running though. I can I can lift it right there a little bit um, once I get the whole thing done. Wow, that's really nice purple. I like that. Okay, so I lifted a little bit there. You can definitely, you know, Read it now. I'm going to put a piece of tissue here to. So now I'm going to do the, the green appetite. And this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Ooh, I already got paint on it. Wow. That's nice and dark too. 
Wow, this green appetite is really nice. It's a, a really lush green. Um, this does not have a pigment number like the other colors do because this is a, made of a little stone. It's a genuine color. It's a Prima Tech color. So... There we go. Yeah, that's real nice. And I, I really like those, both of them actually. Um, the Imperial Purple, you can really see where I lifted the color. I thought it's not the best. But you get the idea. Um, so I'll make up a few more and we'll do some more. This is the last Daniel Smith one that I'm going to do. It's a duochrome. It's a duochrome saguaro green. Uh, it has mica in it. Um, PW20. I'm not sure what the CI number 77019 means. It has titanium white, which is PW6. It has a CI number 77891. I'm not sure what these last parts mean really uh, i'm gonna try to figure it out tomorrow but um duochromes look really nice over other colors mainly um not all of them are that way so we'll see how this one does it's uh mainly mica And this doesn't really look very green to me. Um, I'm trying to put it on a little bit thicker and it's just not working out too good. So we'll see what it looks like once it dries. But that was the, the last Daniel Smith one. And now I'm going to um, work on the... The whole bind. It might be better if I wrote afterwards. I don't know, you know, which is better. It's uh, tricky, you know, you just don't know what to do. And um, we'll see what we what happens here with this one. Um, my water is not the cleanest, but it'll be okay. Probably. I'm probably doing some horrible thing. Oh, wow, that's just so beautiful. I, I'm really liking the Holbein uh, paints. I think, um, I really think uh, they're really intense. They're bright. You know, it uh, depends on what kind of palette you like. What you like to paint is what is dependent on uh, what you want to do. So, there we go. Wow. Isn't that something? And that one is the leaf green. And it is really, really beautiful. And I'll try writing uh, on the backs of the cards on the, when I'm, um, done These pinks are going to be so nice for roses. So, um, I 
roses, carnations, sweet peas. My grandma's flower, favorite flower was sweet pea. And um, I've tried to grow them here a few times. I don't know how in the world she was able to grow them. I remember this huge row of sweet peas that she would grow. And uh, they were just so lovely and they smelled so good. And you know, I, I really, uh, I really wish we didn't have as many insects as we do have. We have a lot of insects here. And these insects tend to really do a job on anything we try to grow. It's, it's just not easy. Um, we have a vegetable area. We do grow vegetables. So we love we love to have our fresh vegetables. And um, but we have a lot of bugs. And I don't know what exactly is the reason why. You know, it's different in different parts of the world, obviously. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of bugs. And we have a lot of biting bugs, and we have um, big bugs, little bugs, all kinds of bugs, scorpions. We have lots of scorpions. And uh, I'm actually allergic to them. This pink is just, it's like a peachy pink. It's so pretty. I'm going to go get some clean water, so I'll be right back. Um, so these two are done now. This is there and here. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I am uh, got clean water now, which probably I should have used already, but that's okay. I'm going to add a few drops to my of clean water. And uh, next, I think I will do lilac. I really am liking these, these whole vine colors. I'd like to get more of them. They're very clean, um, fresh colors. That's really nice. This one is going to be the bright violet. This is so pretty. Wow. It's just such a lovely color. It's just so crazy amazing to me. Look at that. I could just stare at it all day. <laughs> I'm pretty silly, I know, but. I really love these colors. It's just so pretty. My daughter is uh, Yuvia, is also into colors. Um, not so much into drawing. She thinks she thinks that she's not such a good artist, and I think that she definitely is very talented. But uh, it's just not her her thing. She's into um, jewelry design and all kinds of neat things that she, she knows how to do. And um, since I've been doing this ever since I was about five, um, for me, it's just, you know, something I really enjoy. And this one here is the Bright Rose, which is it's so luminous, it's so bright, it's like, wow. Isn't that something? 
It's so beautiful. So there we go. Those are the watercolors that I filled the other day. I still have all the gouaches to go through and the swatch. Um, once these are all dry, I will uh, I will write down the names and things. Isn't this interesting? Where I lifted it, I'm getting an actually a uh, pink coloring there. That's very interesting. That's not what I expected. Um, and a little bit of the water ran down where I lifted it and caused this uh, a little bit of pattern. You can really actually see, I think, I think it's what they call granulation. I'm not that familiar with everything. So I still have something to learn, obviously. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm going on this journey with you guys and I really want to, um, learn this appetite appetite is really nice uh, the color of it is really rich it's a little bit more muted now that it is dried out this leaf green is crazy bright uh, this brilliant pink is really nice they're all dry now um, this peachy pink is just so lovely, the shell pink. And uh, lilac is, is getting there. These two are just like, whoa, they jump off of the page, basically. And the duochrome, um, it's it's golden. It's a little bit gold, goldish green. There's a hue of green in there. It's not very bright. Um, I need to try and experiment. Um, let's see. If I do it on one of these little cards, that might be interesting. I can actually already do it. So I'm going to do a little, little bit of the appetite green. I'll put it. Oops, that's not the appetite green. This is the Imperial Purple. Okay, so there's a little bit of Imperial Purple there. Here's the Appetite Green. I'm going to put Appetite Green right here. There we go. How about that shell pink? Okay. I'm going to let that dry. And then we will put some of that saguaro, the duochrome color over it and see what we think, what, you know, what happens. Um, so. I think um, this leaf green, I need to add a second. A little bit of a second color here, a second layer. No, it doesn't have to be a big stripe or anything. There we go. And we'll let these dry. And, uh, we will come back and do our experiment and see what we think. Okay, I'm back again. 
Um, my little sample is dry now. I let them naturally dry. I don't try to dry them with a dryer. I could, I have one, but I, I don't use it too much. Um, so what we're doing here is uh, with the duochrome saguaro green, we are going to paint over our three colors here just to see what happens. Oh yeah, now I see what happens. Look at that, that's like really pretty nice. Um, it does, uh, it does sparkle a lot more, makes all the difference. It does change the color, obviously, of the, the three colors. But, um, it is quite shiny. It, it, it actually does, it's really actually pretty nice. And um, this is something that I need to do with more of my duochromes. I have quite a few colors in duochrome. Um, I mean, it's night and day here with these two. Um, my duochromes are these right here. And uh, you really just don't see a whole lot of, of anything happening here. Uh, they look sort of washed out. Um, so I think I'm going to start doing this test. Uh, the blue here looks really pretty sharp. And so does this, this color here. Um, that's the oceanic and the cobble blue. Those two are just really nice by themselves. Um, but many of these other colors are just sort of, you know, a little bit of a dud. These two are really nice. And that is the pearlescent white and the iridescent sunstone. So those two are also very nice, but these you can hardly not see anything going on. And so um, I need to do a little bit of a test here and see, um, figure out which colors to put under them. Um, I imagine some of these would look really nice, like this would look really nice over a, a, a blue, maybe to do like a ocean or maybe this one. Um, you know, it's something to, to think about and now I have this one so I have 17 uh, duochromes right now and so I should do a, a really nice test and I think uh, this is definitely very interesting and that's the that's the point of this this is what you're supposed to do these colors are not meant to be used alone as far as I know uh, I believe they're all meant to be used over other colors and uh, to give them that, that, that little bit of, you know, bling and the brilliance of what some flowers actually have this type of thing going on and bugs do too. I like bugs a lot too. I don't like bugs that bite me, but I like bugs in general. I, I've, I'm, I'm doing a butterfly right now. And, I'm gonna see if I can manage that. <laughs> um, I started it. I have it right here close by. Let's see. My my chair makes a lot of noise, and I'm sorry about that. Um, my daughter was talking to me about that today. In fact, um, here I started drawing my butterfly, and I uh, my poor planning on my part. I did not um, put it right in the center and I ran out of room. So I started right here and I'm actually um, using a real butterfly to do this and I'm using my uh, proportional divider to make it uh, double the size. It's a really big butterfly that I found. And uh, I collect bugs. I have a really big centipede right now and some alcohol. <laughs> Um, 
I, I collected bugs as a child, so I mean, people might be grossed out by that, but um, I in generally like bugs. And so um, we'll see how I do. I mean, I'm pretty new at painting again now because um, I haven't had, you know, much free time to do this kind of thing until now. And um, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm, every evening I'm going to fiddle around with my my watercolors, my gouaches, my um, pencils and pens and all that kind of stuff. I have uh, pastels too. Uh, I used to be pretty heavy into that when I was in my 40s. So, but, um, so now you saw my uh, attempt. <laughs> This is a sticker from that gal that I told you guys about before that I really like her um, her art. She's uh, really interesting to me. Uh, and I think she did a really lovely job. Uh, I can imagine cutting this out. She cuts them out by hand. It's really, really something. Anyway, back to my my thing this is almost dry it's getting there yeah it really is it's really nice I, I i really like this i really like that shell pink under there i really like the appetite green there too and the imperial purple wow i mean all three of those are actually pretty neat uh, it's you know it's a little bit more muted than what they are but as you can see um Yes, the imperial purple. So as you can see, you know, the and it's just really neat. It really is. I really like it. Can't help myself. So I'm gonna continue working on these. Um I'm really uh starting to understand today something clicked for me when I was watching the um, YouTube video where this woman she just has this massive collection and she has a really large book she uses larger cards about business card size maybe even baseball card size I think is more like it and all of her cards have the pigments on them and you know the pigments really uh Something clicked for me when I saw that because I need to understand the pigments. Um, she had lots of uh, colors that are the actual same color. They say they're the same pigment even, but they don't look the same. And I found that really interesting. Why don't they look the same? And... Um, and a lot of it has to do like with White Nights. It's an inexpensive uh, watercolor, a very nice watercolor. Um, she thinks that it's just as good as Daniel Smith or Holbein or Schmincke. Um, and by comparing her swatches of her new White Knight colors that she has with her high-end watercolors um, they were very similar but there was differences and in fact in some cases the white knights watercolors were nicer actually and um, so you know I, I find that I find that interesting and I find that to be a good thing because for me at a dollar 99 per full pan that's a deal that you cannot beat. You cannot beat it. There's no one else that will give you a full pan because even this is not a full pan. As you can see, there's, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch right there. I, I, I filled it up um, using, uh, let's see, using the Brilliant Pink. This is a brand new tube. You can see what little bit I actually did use. I, this is a 15 milliliters, 2.5 milliliters fit in there. 
That's what I understand. So if that's the case, I should be able to get six pans out of one tube. And that's pretty interesting. Um, but at $1.99, if you're on a very limited budget, and you know, God knows we all are, I know I am, um, we can expand our colors at a very reasonable price. Yes, it takes about a month to get to any country because it's coming out of Russia. Uh, I ordered from two different vendors off of eBay that was selling White Nights. Uh, I think you can't buy them in the States, I don't know. Um, but um, the two vendors I bought them from, one vendor got me the package out right away immediately. The package is already here in my country and I'm just waiting for it to get through customs to get to me. But the other one they said was in a mandatory uh, customs, Russian customs uh, review for 21 days. And then it won't leave Russia for 21 days. So I'm sitting here waiting still. <laughs> um, it, it'll start moving fairly soon, I think. But, um, you know, it takes a month, and it's no big deal. I even bought a White Knights uh, tin for my um, new colors, and I think it's going to be very similar to this. Uh, the color of it is um, Periwinkle, which is nice. I, I like Periwinkle. I think it's a pretty pretty blue, blue-purple. Um so I'll have another set of another ten, uh, another palette that's different, and uh, yeah, you know I need more room to put them put them in. I need a gouache palette, and I also need a um, another palette because my collection's growing, and I'm not keeping the different brands separate in my palettes. Um, let's see which one is this. This one has the darker colors in it. And in here, there are some um, sminky, somewhere anyway. And um, each little pan, I, uh, I put a number on it, so you can see. I know that this is a Daniel Smith. This is Daniel Smith's uh, lavender, I believe. No, this is the lavender one. Um, anyway. Um, doesn't necessarily have to show you which one's lavender, but this is the, the Daniel Smith lavender. And I keep the numbers out this side and this side and this side and this side because um, I can see them a little bit if I need to look for a color. If I need to look for a color, um, I can take the whole tray out. That's what I did just now. And if I lift it up just enough, I can see, you know, what these are. And uh, if I'm searching for a color, this one I got it in backwards. <laughs> you can see how, now I can see it. This one's in backwards too. They're a little bit difficult to get out uh, which is a good thing. And you put them in, uh, you first put in the front here in this, this area. And then you push down and in between two of these with your fingernail, you can make it go, go into it better. Uh, all of these are all right, like that, and uh, it's just helpful. It's, it's really helpful to be able to lift it. It's two rows of two, 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 and there are 28 pans here, and these are full pans too. I didn't fill them up completely, and I probably could have. Uh, the Daniel Smith lavender did not shrink. Uh, wow, this one right here, which is 139, it's 284, 600, 139. I'm not sure what color it is at the moment. Um, I might be able to find it here in my... Which one it is? It shrunk down so much. It's crazy. 
I filled it all the way up to the brim and it's only half full. That's the one that shrunk down pretty much the most. Um, but some didn't, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it has to do with the type of pigment, I believe. Um, they all have gum arabic as their binder. They do look different. Some look wet. They're not, none of them are. Now this sticks a little bit, but it's not wet. It doesn't leave anything on my finger. And um, some look chalky, and they shrink from the side. This one has shrunk from the side. I don't know if you can actually possibly see that. I don't know, you know, what that consists of. Um, but, you know, it is, it is interesting. I think this one's a Primatec. I think that's hematite, genuine. Um, so, you know, and I think this one is a Primatec, too. Uh, so I'm getting to where I am starting to recognize a few things. I'm learning more all the time. I really uh, do think that knowing what pigments are in them is, is a little bit important. It's like I already noticed uh, that this is PW6, and so this has PW6 in, six in it, too. And uh, I'm going to look that up to figure out what it is. I want to see a list of what the pigments are. Now, this dried out. And, and you can really see the green on top of it. Uh, I don't know if you guys can really see that or not, but it's really something. And I can see how the center of a flower, the wings of a butterfly, a dragonfly, um, a princess's dress, I mean, a ball gown, um, a mermaid. How many things you could actually, this would work really nicely for. And that, that makes it really nice. And, and truly, that is what it's for. And we can actually tell. Now these two are almost dry. Look at the intensity of those two colors. Isn't that something else? I mean, it's just, to me, it's exciting. Uh, it excites your eyeballs. <laughs> Um, I, I really do love these colors and, um, I'm, I'm so happy that I have them and, and it really makes, makes my day to, to be doing this. And, um, I hope you guys feel the same as I do. Um, I'm really lucky that I've been able to obtain some of these because, uh, before here, it wasn't possible to get anything like this at all. There, there just is no store that has anything. And you couldn't ship it in either. It was really a difficult thing to to bring in anything from the U.S. So I, I feel really gratified that, that I have a, a nice selection. And I think, uh, I think it's just, it's just the bomb. <laughs> anyway, uh. I wanted to thank everybody for watching my videos and I hope that you guys have a lovely evening. I'm gonna go off to bed now, I think, and uh, I hope you all have a nice evening and a, ni a nice rest. Good night.